there's a there's a question that starts here. It says, Know ye, know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us. And as we look at this, as we see, it is he that has made us. And, and oftentimes when we gather ourselves together with one another and our families, and uh, oftentimes it's, uh, it's one of those things that we, uh, we talk about ourselves. We talk about where we're at in our lives, the things that we're doing, the things that are going on. Uh, uh, sometimes we turn into poor pitiful uh, selves and we see who can have the most, get the most pity from our dinner. Sometimes we see who can be the, uh, the, 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 the best, the most glorious, the, uh, whatever it may be. But it says, know ye not that the Lord is God it is he that hath made us all that we are is because of him all the things that we have done all the things that we can gather together and whether it is that we whine about it or the things that we uh, choose to, to, to brag about if you will all these things come from God and it is him that should get the glory it is not a, it's not man it shouldn't be a, a well you know who's been the sickest and who's been this and who's been all these things come from the Lord God above all good and great gifts come from God there is nothing that comes from man every good and perfect gift that we have comes from God Almighty. It is He that has made us and not we ourselves. All the things that we choose to say that I have done, you didn't do. You didn't do. Know ye not that the Lord, He is God. Now we say that, and this seems to be a, 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 almost a, a frivolous question here. Know ye not that the Lord, which is in all caps, which is talking about the Godhead, the God, the Father, God, the Son, the, and, and the Holy Spirit, all these things, what we're speaking of. Know ye not that the Lord, He is God. Why is that a relevant question to us this day? Because oftentimes we'll find ourselves saying, Lord, help me. Uh, Lord, this, uh, we, we put Lord in a lot of places that it uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, it, it should go, but we don't have the meaning there behind it. But the question is simply this. Do you not understand that the Lord is God? Even when it comes to reading and studying and going through your Bible, when you find the places where it says Lord, it means the Lord is God. I may, may not mean much yet, but stay with us. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. And all of us have that person in our family that really thinks there's something. I try to be that person for hours. Everybody's got to have one, so you know. I'm kind of kidding, kind of not. His mama rolls her eyes at me. We put a lot of stock in the things that we do, the things that we have achieved, the things that uh, 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 it's one of those uh, kind of, it's not really the comparison of success and who is the most successful and who has done this well, you know, and who's not, but it, it, it's one of these things that it, all these things combined is not of us anyways. And oftentimes you get a group of people together and they start telling you how great they are and you never hear how good God is. But how many Thanksgivings have you and your family been able to gather together as one? Do you count how many t uh, plates are no longer at the table because those folks are not there? How many years have you gathered together with the same amount of placemats around your table? That truly is something to be thankful for, but it's something that we don't look at. But we need to understand that the Lord is God. He has made us. He has made us who we are. Stay with me. We are His people. That is possessive. Understand that. We are His people. We are not our own. Meaning when you gather together with the Johnsons, with the Halls, with the Beach Boards, with whomever it may be, we are His people. We are not our own. All these things will be important shortly. But verse 4 says, enter into his gates. Now this is something truly important because this is something that's uh, uh, been, been coming uh, uh, through, through messages for quite some time now in which God has sent. But it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, and I want you to, to, to picture and try to understand with me this morning that the, that the back doors truly are the gates. And it says that we enter into his gates not with, uh, not with smiling faces, not with uh, uh, an appearance that we're glad to be here, not with, uh, 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 it don't say enter into his gates with your Bibles, enter 
enter into his gates with your family, but it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Now truly and honestly, church, you truly have something to be thankful for because you was able to enter into his gates this morning. Melvin's glad to be here. Melvin, I'm glad to be here with you. I'm not sure what everyone else is doing. But it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I don't really try to pretend to be something that I'm not all the time. But it's like this. I'm people too. I know what it's like to wake up on Sunday morning and want to sleep in. I know what it's like to wake up on Sunday morning and think, man, I wish I didn't have to go to church. What kind of people truly are we to say that? Hey, we just read that we are his people. We are not our own. If you go back and you, you, you really dive into the messages over the last few weeks, we've really uh, been looking at being dead to ourselves. And, and it's not about what we want, but it's, what about, it's about what God would desire for us and through us. We are not our own. Enter into his gates. This is his house. Amen. With... Thanksgiving. Seen something. Logan shows me all these like funny pictures and whatnot, but this one was of Kermit the Frog, and it said something or another about that uh, uh, it, you can get up at 4 a.m. to go Black Friday shopping, but you can't make it to church by 10. Seriously? That's us? We'll leave Thanksgiving dinner early so we can go shop. We do these things. We, will, we don't mind staying out late and doing things that we desire to do on Saturday night. Hey, church, are you with me? Are you understanding what we're talking about this morning? That we are, 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 are truly capable of doing our own thing throughout the week. But when it comes time to, to, to give God a couple hours of our lives, we're not thankful to be here. We didn't even want to come. We don't know why we came. It is all these things are relevant unto you and I. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. It's not with the, 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 the face of, man, I stayed up too late. Hey, you know it all week church was on Sunday. You know it all week that church was today. You know it all night last night while I laid in bed watching football. I knew all night that I had to get up this morning. So when I wake up tired and wake up feeling like I wish I could sleep another couple hours, I could have hit the power button. But as we wake up, it's, a, it's the thought of thinking, well, I have another day that I am able to go forth and to sing praises unto my Savior in a church filled with, with, with his people that he has created and he has put me there with. I have the opportunity to go forth and to preach his gospel one more day. This is the attitude that we should bring into his house. The attitude that we should bring into his people with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. But we look at this as be thankful that he blesses us. That he gives unto us. Be thankful unto him. Have you thought of anything you had to be thankful for this morning? I don't typically mean to pick on a particular family, but there's a family sitting in the back that has a whole heap to be thankful for this particular Thanksgiving. Because I'm just going to be quite honest with you as from what the pastor has to say. When I went to see him, I didn't expect him to be back in church. Quite honestly, when I went to visit Brother Leon, I was thinking, man... I don't want to have to do another funeral. That's what I was thinking. That's a shame. And I'm supposed to be leading this flock, and that's the first thought that went into my mind. But as I seen him, there was not a whole heap of life in him. No offense, Leon. He was kind of on some dope at the time, you know. But it's like this, they, I, I went and I saw, and they truly have something that if they have never been thankful before, they can be thankful this year. 
You people in the congregation can honestly be thankful because you too prayed for them. And you can say, hey, we prayed, and you know what? He's here. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. They could give all the thanks they wanted to to a doctor for whatever it is that they'd done. Truth be known, doctor didn't, give, didn't have any ability that God didn't give him. All the thanks and the praise and the honor and the glory all goes into Christ because that is what Christ can do. Amen. For the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth through all generations. Now understand this. You can go back and you can read the Old Testament and you can find out all the things that God was able to do for, for, for the, uh, the, 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 the Israelites through, through all the, 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 the prophets, the saints. You can go back and you can look at all the, the, the lives that Jesus touched as he went and as he done his ministry. But it didn't stop there. David penned a very daring prayer, if you will. David uh, took a pen and he wrote down some very tough questions, if you will. David took his pen and he wrote in the 26th Psalm, he said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Can you say that? Would you dare to hit your knees in prayer and, and, and call God out on this matter and say, Judge me, Lord. I want you to look upon me. I want you to examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Take a look inside. You can go back and you can, uh, you can go into Job and you can look at what the Lord said and the devil said, Have you considered my servant Job? Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. Have you? I have trusted also when the Lord will have you. I told you to go back and, and begin thinking of all the things that God has delivered you through this year. Who is the first person that you turn to in every single valley that you hit? Was it God first? Or man first? Friends? You know, we just turn to our phones and bury our face in there and our social media and our, uh, and our ESPN app or whatever it is that we do to, to get lost in ourselves, to have our, our me time here? Or could we say, examine me, O Lord, improve me, try my reins in my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. And we look and I want you to think about truly what is before your eyes. What, the things that you dwell upon. The things that, uh, uh, that, that, that keep your, uh, the, the majority of your uh, attention. The, all the things in life. Well, where do we keep our focus? Is it upon the loving kindness of God? And can any of us say that I have walked in thy truth? This is a time for thanksgiving. Hey, this is the day that we set aside that if at any, no other time in our lives that we're going to be thankful, this is the week that we're going to do it. Coming up on Thursday, we're going to be thankful. Well, can you say any of these things with it? We never really had... You know, the tables at Thanksgiving. You didn't really have the kids' table and the adult table. You didn't really have that to look forward to growing up. You know, I had the commercials portray in different TV shows that you get to sit at the adult table this year. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Read on down here. Stay with me. I have not sat with vain persons. You get to choose where you sit when you come to eat with us. You get to choose where it is that you're going to sit down. No different than it is in life. You choose who it is that you are going to be sitting with. And I, I dare ask you this morning, who did you choose in 2017 to sit with? Could you dare hit your knees, speak to God in truth, 
Because know you not that the Lord is God. So when you cry out, Lord, help me, it's God that is going to help you. Know you not that? We didn't cover that. So when you uh, begin to say these things, could you say then, I've not sat with the vain persons? I have spent this year with God's people. Neither will I go in with the disassemblers. What does that mean? Well, you can break this particular, we could spend the rest of the year right here. We can break this down in several different areas and we can look at it in different ways. Uh, neither will I go in with the disassemblers. Well, if you uh, decided to, uh, uh, to gossip one with another, hey, you went in with the disassemblers. If you have decided to, uh, to, to pick, a, whether it's a family member, whether it's a brother or sister in Christ, whether it's a, some stranger that you don't know, if you've decided to have a full conversation about them without them present, hey, you went in with the disassemblers. I have not sat with the vain persons. I have not been a part of those people. Been several mass shootings this year, ain't they? I know it kind of sounds like the year-end serving uh, service, but it's not. But you can look back. There's been several mass shootings just over the last month and a half. Honestly, what do you think about them people? What do you think about the guy that went into Texas and just started shooting up the church? What about the guy in Northern California went in there and killed some people and a couple kids got killed? What about that? What about the lady from Knoxville who went outside and held her baby upside down by the feet over a balcony and wound up dropping her baby and killed it? What about that person? What do you think about them? You think very highly of them, church? Everybody's looking at me with the faces of disgust, and if I kept on talking, I bet you I could bring tears to somebody's eyes. What's your thoughts on those folks? Are we feeling the love for them right now? I mean, hey, this is the time of year in which we're to be thankful when we're truly to, to act like Christians and when we're to have love for our brother. What's your thoughts on them? Preacher, my thoughts is this. You will never find me sitting at a table with them. All right? So there ain't nobody that you hate, right? Because you get in on deeper into the New Testament and we'll find out that if we hate our brother, we are just as guilty as murder. You know, I find that in the New Testament. I believe you'll find that in 1 John, I think. I might be wrong, but I think that's where it's at. You'll find that in 1 John, that if you hate your brethren, you are guilty of murder. So, hey, guess what? I bet you we sat with them this year. Well, you bet. I bet you we find ourselves at their table more than we do the Christian's table. Amen? Now, you know, ain't no one will say amen that is it, because then we'd have to admit that we're wrong. And lo and behold, sinners come into the house of God. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I can tell you, as for me and my house, and I'm not to take a verse away, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, more often than not, we sit with the wicked. And that's just the way it is, because I can be truthful this morning. I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I can pass thine altar. Regardless of what anybody has ever taught you, an altar will not hurt you. Now it's funny, you, you look at me as a preacher, why would you say that? Well, understand that it's not a place that people really flock and come to. But the altar is not going to hurt you. The person that you speak to at the altar is not going to hurt you. But verse 7, that I may publish or that I may speak, that I may proclaim, that I may shout, that when I open my mouth and sound comes out, that it would be with the voice of thanksgiving. 
Travel back in time with me, church, will you? Travel back into the wilderness uh, after uh, Moses has led the Israelites out of the bondage of Egypt. Travel back into the wilderness as they wandered around. And I want you to understand that uh, the, the people began to murmur. They began to complain because they got tired of what God was feeding them. They got tired of what God was providing because they got tired of the manna. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to send quail until it spews out your nose and out your ears. You're going to eat quail until you're sick and tired of it. Uh, God has this way of doing these things. But understand that the people began to murmur. The people began to complain. And what happened? Anybody know? Was the people not consumed on the outer skirts of the camp? With what? Anybody here read your Bible? Melvin, tell them what happened to the people. The ground swaddled some. There was flame. The people was, uh, uh, the, 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 the flames came out. All these things, these people, uh, let me just uh, uh, paraphrase for you. The, uh, the, those, all those complaining and whining people that did not choose to speak with a voice of thanksgiving, they met their maker. What are you spending the majority of your time doing? Because you know, we all know people that no matter when you see them, they're always happy. No matter the circumstances that, that, that is set before them, they're always thankful. They can always tell you something positive. Amen? Y'all remember Brother Junior, he was that feller. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. So let me ask you this this morning, church, and I'll almost be done. Who you give you praise to? Let me finish the question. Do you give your praise unto God Almighty? Or do you give your praise unto the devil? Preacher, what you talking about? We don't praise the devil. Preacher won't do that here. We're not a satanic cult. Stay with me. Are you telling of all the good things that God has done for you? Or are you speaking of all the bad things that you're going to blame on the devil for doing to you? Who do you give your praise to? Who do you spend most of your time talking about? Do you spend the majority of your time telling others about all the great and wondrous works that God is, has done in your life and has done in your family and has done for your people and has done for your church and you have seen in your land? Or do you tell them about how pitiful it is because God's providing this for you right now and you're being led out of captivity and, you know, I understand that God's feeding us uh, angel food. Uh, and God has really taken care of us. And he sent his pillar of fire to lead us by night. And, you know, I understand that we have this cloud to lead us during the day to kind of block some of the heat off of us. And I understand that God's really taking care of us. But, you know, I just really don't like it. Are you that person? Are you going to enter into his gates and into his court with thanksgiving? Lord, I love the habitation of thy house. And the place where thine honor dwelleth. We touched it this morning. People that do things to God's house, we, we, ha we don't tolerate that very well, do we? Whether it's the church shooting, whether it's people who break in and steal from the church, whether it's people who, who, who take their spray paint and put graffiti all over churches, we don't, we don't really think that highly of them, do we? Uh, well, we want to say that that's sorry. It takes a sorry person to steal from a church. Verse 8, Lord, I love thy habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Do you understand that that is the person you look at in a mirror? Born again believer, do you understand that this is the habitation of the Lord? Do you understand that this is the place where his honor can dwell is here? 
It's not this building. It's not this parking lot. It's not on this property. It's not down the road at another church. It's not at a church in town. It's not at a mega church anywhere that you can find. But the place where God's honor can dwell is here. Which is also wherever it is that you take it. <coughs> so for Thanksgiving, could you dare go from verse 8 to verse 1 and speak those words? When you gather around your Thanksgiving table... Whether it's with your immediate family, whether it's with your extended family, whether it's by yourself, could you dare say, Lord, examine me. I want you to search into the innermost hidden parts of me, and I want you to show me if I am thankful. Because I think I walk in your footsteps. I think I live in your truth. I think that, that all these things, you, you can go down through all the things that David has penned. But understand, God knows your heart. Melvin pointed that out. He knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart and the mind. We now turn to the, uh, uh, the 69th Psalm and say this. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, as we stand together.